Suki and to welcome everyone for the weekly discussion. Today, good participation. Uh, we have our appointed traditional topic to start the discussion. But anyway, before going to this uh, appointed topic, I would like to call for any other topic or any other statement or any other. Yes. Uh, Bhante, I wanted to say that uh, my friend Bhikkhu Jayasara from the United States sends his warmest regards to you. Uh, Can we invite him to also to participate now? What is the time at uh, U- USA now? It's probably like 12 hours behind at least. That means uh, evening, Yeah. 7.30. Yeah. Uh, 8.30. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly. I think he's in New Jersey right now. New Jersey. Uh, yeah, yeah. So please pass the message. Okay. Uh, you pass the greetings, and I invited him to uh, participate. Participate, okay. that means we are conquering the whole world. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll let him know. Okay. Any other? Ari? I'm Sarai Bante. Yes. I'm Niranja here. Uh Bante, we have uh, leftover reports received from Rockhampton Satipasala. Uh, is, it, is it in English? Then you can uh, English? present, please. Yes, Yes, Bante, there are about 10. So start reports. with you about three, so we can then we can take our own time. We start with the uh, early three reports. Yes, Bante. First report. Sydney, six years old from Rockhampton, Satipasala. Six, six years. Nine, six years old. That is very important for the, the participants here. Please repeat. Yes, Bhante. Sydney, six years old. Mindful walking. I felt the carpet floor touching my feet. It was soft to my feet. The softness was high when I turned. My mind went to thoughts. Thoughts were just happening and I ignored it. And mind came back to my walking feeling cold to my feet. Then mind stayed on walking. I did 15 minutes of mindful walking, mindful sitting. I sat in a full lotus posture on a bed. I put my hand in lap and closed my eyes gently. I heard the starting bell does like, goes like ding. I listened to it all the way to the end. At the beginning, it was loud. And then in middle, sound was going down. And at the very end, the sound stopped. But I was still listening and did not hear anything. I switched onto my quiet mind. Then I felt breath naturally. I breathed, in breath, was cold and out breath was hot. In, in breath was getting more cold and out breath was getting less hotter. I kept on washing the breaths. I did mindful sitting for 15 minutes. General mindfulness, making cereal. I got milk out and I felt it to my hand. Mother got cup out for me. It had a handle and had a Sri Lankan flag. I poured milk carefully into my cup. My mother heated milk for me. Sadhu, 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 bante. End of the report, Bhante. I doubt whether Sitmi is listening for the moment, but anyway, this is the first time I heard that Sitmi can sit on a full cross-legged. I know Ashmi can do it, and uh, Vishmi can do it, and Vishmi is a yoga teacher, and elder sister, but they are always fighting. The younger sister and the medium sister, they are, the middle one is really idealistic, and very, very nice that she can sit. But Sitmi is the one always making noise. But today she is reporting she can sit 16 minutes and walk 16 minutes. I mean, at the age of six. Just imagine. So therefore I asked their parents, don't worry about, I will take care about the children. You mind your own business. And the three sisters, all are uh, participating. But lucky, unlucky enough, last Saturday I was completely uh, bewildered. I had no chance to listen to it. I saw them in the... Uh, my inbox but I had no chance to sit and write answer I am just telling sit me I am so happy you can sit cross-legged even one split second even one minute and you can report not in breath is cooler and output is warmer not only that just like uh, Ashmi uh, you can see the coolness is reducing warmness is reducing I mean the it is not the 
shape, but it's a menace. How the breath is calming down, how the in breath and out breath is calming down, and I hope, if I am not too much, while you observe the in breath is calming down, while you observe the out breath is calming down the heat, you can listen sounds also. You can feel your pain also. You can think. While they are happening, still you can see the manner, how the breath is calming down or agitated, becoming agitated or calming down, immaterial. Only thing is you have to understand, mind is multifaceted. At the beginning, we take only one criterion. It may be too much for sit me to understand, but I hope Anusha can help and uh, teach her while observing the calming down breath, still can feel pains here and there. But sometimes while you are feeling the pain prominently, you can see the breath here and there still calming down. So therefore, for the calming down of the breath, your personal involvement, ego is not necessary. It is always in a calming down process. Sometimes in an agitating process. Only your thing must be reporting, which means reporting excellent. We are going to the next Report number two, Vinudi, eight years old, mindful sitting. I sat with my legs crossed on the floor. I felt my first inhale was cold and the exhale was warm. In, it didn't continue for long. Then the inhale was warm and exhale was cold. When I inhaled, I felt my nose getting big and when exhaled, I felt my nose getting small. I could continue a few minutes without any distractions, even though I heard outside sounds. The this time, the stars didn't appear. I did a mindful sitting about 20 minutes. Mindful walking. In mindful walking, I didn't have anything special. I did it for 15 minutes. End of the report, Bhante. I think Vinuti is from Sri Lanka. Uh, I don't know whether it's still from the Rockhampton. But even then, sitting cross-legged, not in the full lotus posture, is a good... Uh, Exercise to start with. If you have a thin body, easy to fairly put into the cross-legged position. I am not serious about the posture, but I am telling is these things you can increase, you can see the improvements in time to come. Wherever you may start with the posture and see they become pliable and flexible. And more the posture become pliable and flexible, more time you can keep the breath in breath face to face with. So you must be tactful whenever the breath becomes longer time with you uh, face to face. You can see not only the shape but only the manners also. How it is changing, how it is behaving chronologically as you keep on practicing. Without observing uh, continuously you can't see shape. Sorry, you can't see manners. Manners you can see longer observation. So it's a, it's a how do you call it? Double fold gain only for the intellectual people, only for the prepared people. Otherwise, they will just say yes, breath, yes, out breath. That's it. But how it changes happens when you are sitting comfortably for longer time and you keep keep the breath in view with for longer time. If you have a friend, have association longer time, longer the better understanding. I am not telling the friend is better. Friendies may be just an unwanted fellow, but you can understand, good, we are Vinodhi, we are movie. Report number three, Ranu, eight years old, walking with mindful walking. I walk indoors. I had no distractions. I looked 1.8 meters ahead of me. I had no distractions. I focused on the lower part of my body. I felt the hard tiles. I had one addictive pain, but I ignored it and kept on going. I kept my hands behind my back, mindful sitting. I sat down in my full lotus posture. I had no distractions. I focused on the upper part of my body. I felt my breath going in and out. I had my eyes closed nearly the whole time. End of the report, man. So four times, three times mentioned no distraction. It's a blessing. Under such circumstances, you must slowly increase the time. It's an invitation to you to consider longer sitting, but if you're in a group sitting, you have to start and stop as the group coming. But this is a good hint 
for you to give a, your own private time and have a longer time as far as there are no distractions. That means, according to the Buddhist theory, you have done enough merits in your past life. If you do not have enough past memories, you have good time, but you, you can't sit. A lot of distractions. Some people go through the distraction, but this character, there is no challenge. Distraction. And very rarely only people report no distraction. Everyone very expert to re- report distractions. They are just uh, unwanted things. You must report no distraction. But it's, a, it's an invitation. You to sit longer time. Or for example, if you can uh, walk without distraction, it's an invitation to increase the uh, walking time. Whatever it may be, your, your mind space is increasing. Uh, therefore, it's a very good uh, report. But anyway, we can't give time because here a lot of people waiting to go into the Purabe um, Sutta. Thank you very much for the presentation. And uh, you, do you have the written written questions in your inbox uh, with you? Yes, Pante. Yes, Please Pante. delete these three and resend me the balance seven. I will try my best to answer in a written form, please. Yes, Pante. So anyone in the audience wish to comment on these reports? America? No comments? Still you are in jet lag? No. Smile, will you? So if there are no comments, uh, you have any? So we are going to, we are shifting to, into the, the Purabeda Sutta in the Sutta Nipata. So um, continuing um, on to the 10th uh, verse in the Sutta, I call him peaceful who is indifferent to sensual pleasures. Um... In him no knots are found. He has crossed over attachment. So um, here again the Buddha is emphasizing uh, this equanimity of mind. uh, An equanimity not just towards sensual pleasures but um, uh, all kinds of pleasure really. So uh, there's the sensual pleasure but uh, even even like um, spiritual pleasure or all kinds of pleasure, and, um, and when we also talk about pleasure, we also mean adversity as well. So, um, like, uh, this indifference is um, the word that uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi uses, indifferent. But uh, it, what he's referring to is the uh, equanimous state of mind. Whereas, like, uh, indifference can have a, a suggestion that it's... Um, like uh, a, again, a numbing or a dullness of mind, or a, uh, indifference. Uh, uh, it has a negative inter- uh, meaning, but um, in this case, he really means the uh, equipoise. And it's not that he rejects sensual pleasures; it's just that he, uh, he he can look on sensual pleasures. He can look on them and not be um, enmeshed into those sensual pleasures. So similarly, it's not enmeshed by um, unpleasant sensations or, you know, so whether it's uh, good things are arising or uh, uncomfortable or or not so pleasant things are arising, he is equanimous. So in this way, he, he is making peace with the world. He is making peace with the world. And um, I, I did a lot of work around anger and... Um, uh, there was uh, one psychologist that I was very interested in. He had written a few books on on anger, and he talked about uh, active anger as one type of anger. So this is when something is unpleasant and you um, have an aversion towards that uh, that thing, and it's active. And then there's a, a passive aggressive type of anger where you um, you you haven't got the power to directly uh, counterattack the thing that is uh, bringing you distress, so you you kind of try to get it back indirectly later on. And then in, there's a declining type of anger, which is uh, where you uh, because you you feel powerless to um, be angry with the thing that is um, distressing you or, or uh, unpleasant. 
So therefore, you you turn against yourself, and you you're angry with yourself for being powerless and and weak or pathetic. And then there's a, a positive forms of anger, where which he called one is called transformative anger, which is like you don't like something, but it gives you the kind of energy to go and do something about it to make it um, to make it better and change. But ultimately, anger is a kind of an energy, and you need to bring it to to peace. And um, so. Normally, when I'm talking about bringing things to peace, you know, it's a lot about um, peace and reconciliation and forgiveness with that difficult thing. But uh, it's not so easy to have such a ladder of explanation around sensual pleasures. Because uh, normally we think sensual pleasures are good things to have, but uh, really they're also an agitation to the mind. So maybe you can think about it in terms of like uh, uh, people who are very busy with uh, just busy with busyness or busy with parties or busy with going here and there and busy with kind of self-importance. Um, it's, a, it's a tremendous uh, distraction and it isn't uh, bringing one to a state of, of peacefulness. So to have an equanimous state of mind to be indifferent to sensual pleasures, to be indifferent to um, to unpleasant uh, sensations, to um, to be able to look on the world, whatever is happening in the world, whether it's distressful or not, not to flinch, not to um, divert one's attention, not to be callous towards those difficult things, but to be uh, wide-eyed and um, knowledgeable, wise, penetrating whatsoever, whatever is happening, whether it's bitter or sweet, uh, that is indeed a person who I call peaceful. Him, in him there are no knots to be found. So again here, these knots that he's referring to are the like... Um, Knots of, of anger, knots of um, greed. You know, uh, these are kind of just bodily knots. Like the, you know, one of the re one of the advantages of doing um, kayanupasana is that one can help release some of these knots that are in the body, whatever the origin of those knots are. Uh, there's a a, whole, a a slogan in in another form of 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 kind of therapy and they say the body keeps the record so these knots that we find in our body and in our mind are often um, like a record of of past difficulties so we we make peace with these uh, difficulties and we as i mentioned earlier on we, we we forgive ourselves we we make peace we reconcile ourselves and we forgive and move on and uh, to make a wholehearted forgiveness uh, it's very useful sometimes to have a clear accountability of what what has happened so this this requires a certain mindfulness you you know what happened and you make an uh, you you apologize you can be sorry towards uh, maybe a person that you have offended or you can also just make, you know, make an apology towards oneself if you have offended yourself. And then also you can make an amends. So to make an amends is to make it up to the other person or to make it up to yourself. So um, what I find is, is that uh, like people who are like, um, as I mentioned, in anger, there can be kind of a self-harming type of anger, angry with oneself, then... Uh, like this is having your own inner dictator and uh, sometimes we need to make it up to ourselves for having been cruel to ourselves having been harsh with ourselves so untangling these knots in the body and in the mind is a uh, part of the ongoing process uh, of getting to know the mind intimately with with mindfulness and wisdom so it's not just mindfulness but also mindfulness and wisdom and having these strategies to untie these knots, he cross he has crossed over attachment. So again, this is referring to the second noble truth: 
you know, that there is suffering and the cause of suffering is attachment. So having crossed over attachment is that we see the attachment in whatever thing is arising. We can have an attachment that's a, an attachment of pleasure or we can have an attachment of anger. So both are kind of the same, two sides of the same coin, which is just simply attachment. And that is that we are moving beyond our needs and into the wants. So when we, when we want more from a situation than it can give, then uh, we have attachment. So that can be an attachment of anger or an attachment of, of pleasure. So having crossed over attachment means one is free from attachment. And, and this is the ultimate freedom and liberty that we seek. Rather than freedom of attachments, meaning like I, I'm so wealthy that I can buy whatever I want. Whereas as monks, we, we have a different kind of wealth, which is freedom from attachment. So this is having crossed over from atta- having crossed over attachment. So maybe uh, Mahadero has something to say about this. Uh. Uh, I hope this is uh, stanza no. number eight hundred and sixty-one, according to the Buddha Jayanti book. So eight to five seven, no? uh, eight five. Seven, eight five seven. So that is Bhikkhubodhi's numbering. No, this is uh, Pali Text Society. S- yeah, so this is having uh, two, uh, I think, uh, to think, bring it back to the more traditional way. Tang brumi upasantoti kamesu anapekhitang anapekhinang ganta tasa navijanti atari so visattika. This is the Pali stanza and the simple translation into singular yam atasihatika. Vastu kama klesha kama and apeksha nati. He is he who has no materialistic pleasure or immaterial pleasure or uh, physical and uh, the religious. There is no such a pleasure. Uh, he recognized as a calm and quiet person, saint in, in simple English. Uh, for him, abhidhyadi kaya grante He is having no uh, the uh, abhidhya, visama uh, uh, Tushna, Nabija, Dueshe. Dueshe, no patiga, no hatred. So he took time to explain about that. And the Buddhist explanation is there are nine kinds of uh, uh, hatred. You have an obvious reason. Tenth one, there is no obvious reason. Uh, this is Dasa uh, Istana uh, The tenth one is Astana Kopa. Istanakope is, he is my enemy and uh, he uh, hated me and he will hate me. So that's a three kind of hatred uh, with me. And uh, some, some people say he hated my family, he is hating my family, he will hate my family, my friends. Third one is, he supported my enemies he is supporting my enemies. He will support my enemies. Nine. They are all obvious reason. And the tenth one, there is no obvious reason. That is called very perverted. That is called psychiatric cases. That means due to the last life or something genetically, you have, that is what you call psychiatric situation. It is 50% uh, of people, uh, they don't know why they are hating other people. Genetically, they are hating. And they are appearing mostly as skin diseases. Their appearance and the skin become very uh, unfriendly. And Astana Kopa, sometimes it appears like masochism or uh, sadistic. He hates himself. He destroys himself or gives distraction to the distortion to the others. So they are will recognize in the Western psychology, but the Buddhist explanation is 100%. All the diseases Ayurveda accept because of Asthana Kopa. You have some kind of a misbalance in the Vata, Pitta, Kapa that you do not know. And you are taking uh, non conducive food, no, not conducive postures, not conducive climatic situation, and friends. Ultimately, you are keep on feeding your Asthana Kopa. 
But the Ayurveda is understanding all the mental and physical diseases are due to Asthana Kopa. Asthana Kopa means you don't know the reason. And one way is I understand the Vata Pitta Sema Kapa and other thing is Paskamma. And it is attributed to the food, climate, Paskamma and your present mental state. Kammaja, Chittada, Uttuja, Ahar. That is purely Buddhist. So therefore you have to understand specifically when you are meditating, there may be some adverse situation can happen. And whenever adverse situation happens, for him it is not an adverse situation. For me it is adverse. For example, leeches. When you're bitten, some people get soaring. Some other people do not care. Even the mosquitoes. Even this humidic, hum, humidic, humidity climate, the damp climate. So they are... They, you you have some kind of allergic reactions. So when these are happening, you, have to, you must not fight with the agent. Instead, you have to understand it is happening due to the unknown base, asthana. You can't reason it out. No linear relationship. There is a reciprocal relationship. It's a matrix. So therefore, you must not conclude this is due to that and this is due to this. There is no single reason for anything. Multiple reason. And single uh, disease, single symptoms, no, multiple symptoms. So we have to, by talking and working, one day we will hit the target. And then you will be free from mental situation of psychiatric upsets. Or otherwise you will understand, I am a psychiatric, pathogenic, pathetic person. Some people can understand, by understanding they will be healed. So that is why the discussion, we must be thrash out. So other friends, our Co-practitioners must understand this. If I am thrashing out, others can come out with a suggestion, not with the exactly because you are not a psychiatrist, you are not an Ayurvedic doctor, you are not a mental doctor, physical, so Western doctor. So Western psychology is very nicely presenting terminologies, but they have not know. They are not known. The Buddha has completely given the map. Good. Anyway, we are learning with the uh, uh, what do you call. Uh, state of art kind of science, state of art kind of medicine, and psychiatric situation, then we can connect that into the them into the Buddhist teaching, and therefore the monks we are in a very very uh, fortunate situation, but not only by meditating, not only by meditating, you have to listen, and you have to see uh, inferential connections and uh, deductive knowledge. To understand, therefore, no one is a teacher, no one is a, a disciple. So artificial intelligence is killing it. They have forgotten the basic needs of the human being. They are going to the technology, to the technology, to the technology. They are answering technological questions, not human questions. So recently I heard that uh, American uh, president went to Q uh, South Korea and talking about the Samsung deal, and says we are going to give answer from the artificial intelligence. They are mentally sick people. People are suffering from no food. They are talking about the stock markets. They are talking about the artificial intelligence. We must use it and understand it's a, it's a cancer. It's the outcome of a sick mind. But the human being, they are living in a cave or living with the uh, mosquitoes, living with the leeches. And what the artificial intelligence can do? You can understand, you have your way out, but you cannot establish them. They must be volatile, and any time you can plug into the any artificial intelligence or any rock for us living. And that is the way the Buddha's teaching is for the beginners. So therefore we become beginners as far as we are discussing. We don't know. We are just telling. Others are fully accepted, others' views are well accepted. With the male or female, ordain or non-ordain, Buddhist or non-Buddhist. So by introducing Satipasala, I am now opening windows to the completely unknown areas. How the newly born children, they are in blood, they are drugs. Because mother is addicted. And they are definitely undergoing the adverse childhood experience. And definitely vulnerable for bad habits. And then how can we answer? We have to answer the child, we have to answer the parents, and we have to answer the grandparents. They don't know how much the hatred is working in their mind. 
they are doing these things because of the inbuilt hate and knowledge means unidentified hate is I call knowledge unidentified knowledge is always seeking new research looking here and there because present moment they are not happy and identified hate you can say it is an artificial thing be here and now it's a universal answer you can understand how much you are out of the moment out of the present moment Chanasampati. So they can't come to the present moment. They challenge. So last time in a psychiatric course, one doctor came and he talked about artificial intelligence. He was very nice. He was telling for Sri Lanka, we need them because have the multimedia projector and giving all the kind of thing. But he made a joke. Can the artificial intelligence robot can be mindful? <laughs> can a robot be mindful? Never. Because the robot make a himself is not mindful. So recently presented uh, robots. Sikha me khatu satamagadi ani chameleon. Chameleon presented to the uh, the he saw in us Dalai Lama. And Dalai Lama asks, uh, can that chameleon read my mind? Having all the capacities, the robot chameleon can he read my mind? No, he is not reading his mind and the maker himself can't read his mind. That's why they are making outside and sending the people mad. But imagine here, uh, understanding Abhijja Domana, sir, he will explain the, how the perverted anger is boiling blood. You are not present in the moment. You are not happy in the here and now. So you think, it is called research, bloody shit. Buddha presented Arya Pariyasana. Arya Pariyasana is how to bring mind to the present moment, not to the same kites, to the uh, Saturn or moon. They, 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 are, they are very uh, perverted people. You, American. I have two Americans now. And one, Ukraine. Imagine. Still not fighting. So therefore, being a simple forest monk, living in this climatic situation, is what a kind of revolution. Present day, so much of fighting in Sri Lanka. So much of uncertainty in Sri Lanka. So much of killing and burning houses in Sri Lanka. And non-reaction. People consider we are callous. They consider you sit and cross-legged and do meditation. You are not citizens. Because you are in the forest. I mean, we know everything, but we are not reacting. Because we are reaction that comes due to our hatred. It is unbased hatred. There is no reason directly. Uh, because of the nine hatred, you can have, you have reason. The tenth one is Astana Kopa. There is schizophrenia, bipolar. And they don't know, they are, they are harming themselves. And now serious killing is very famous in America. In city by city. And they are taking drugs. Overdose, killing 1,400 people in uh, San Francisco. And American soldiers and veterans, 26 each day, committing suicide. There is no way they can make up their mind. They don't know mindfulness. And now, of course, they are introducing mindfulness because both is telling. Now you are Dhammadiva, you are also teaching how to be mindful after killing so much of Vietnamese people and not to kim, kill himself. Is this mindfulness you are going to teach? Then I told I am taking uh, the, some parts of that also, that is the Free the Mind film. But that's also answering. But we are talking about not the therapeutic mindfulness, we are talking about the preventative mindfulness. So these things are explaining that particular person understand the baseless hate we have. That is the thing pushing you from the present moment. I am repeating. If you have baseless hate, that is pushing you from the present moment. Present moment appears very boring, very monotonous. So it is talking about the past and the future, other people and other places. Whole younger generation sent astray. Lucky enough, America is not spending so much of money for education now. So they are purchasing educated people from the outside. All the jobs created for the outsiders. Because education is completely misguiding, misguiding children. So therefore, this uh, the 
understanding the head which is appear like a motivation for us but to understand how much it is benevolent how much it is malevolent the buddha says each and every motivation is malevolent sabbe sankara dukkha is a universal thing sabbe sankara dukkha so whatever the motivation motivational or volitional or willful action is ending up with suffering so therefore uh, to take the uh, take further and go there we each and every one is having a lesson having a instruction uh, in this kind of suttas so therefore i would like to sum up my uh, remarks uh, with that wish to know if anyone is having to uh, yeah they are views america he is also from america he also from america thank you so much ansa um i just uh, my thoughts on this is well we come to this practice and um uh, of meditation and um we become more in tune to ourselves and what comes up usually is our aversion and our passion our sensual being drawn to sensuality and being uh aware of our aversion to things um so that is the first thing that we find we be, we seem to become suddenly very sensitive to uh things we love sensual things and also also things that we don't like and um then uh so speaking of the average person who doesn't meditate they they're not sensitive to that because they haven't tuned in they're looking outward they're looking at the things that they don't like and the things that they like and they're attracted or pushing away these things so um it's just it's interesting if you talk to somebody who it doesn't meditate they they're not aware of that they if you speak about your insight they they seem you know not to understand because they're sort of uh they're not in tune to it so uh so it's the first step in going beyond our passions and our aversions is to get in tune to our uh into uh, in tune to ourselves and realize that we do have uh things that are causing us in either way you know suffering uh through being attached to sensuality or suffering through being uh, averse to others and fighting and uh hating things uh so it, it almost seems like when we start meditating that there is a like it's a step backward because you feel a lot of trouble from the things that you like and that you don't like and you become very sensitive so um but at the same time i i noticed for myself that even though i was more in uh, when i started to meditate i realized you know i was very sensitive to things but at the same time you know and things became more vibrant and uh my you know i started to become aware that i had anger i never knew that i had anger but when i started meditating and living in a community of meditators i realized oh well, i've got lots of anger and um then as well being uh really caught up in desire so um but um once you can start to see that these both both the desire and the anger are causing you a lot of suffering then you can continue to work but uh the, the interesting thing as well is that that I was going to say is that even though i became much more sensitive to anger and passion uh at the same time i felt this calming down and this peacefulness in, in me and so this vitality and uh aliveness that was also becoming coming up so it was interesting to see how there was that 
really uh, sort of a, I don't know what it, what it was, but a sort of more at peace and more alive and vibrant at the same time uh, of feeling a lot of aversion and a lot of uh, attraction to desirous objects. So if I, I would like to make a comment that when you feel internalized and you feel the vibration, dynamism, and uh, uh, we call apamada, that means uh, vigilant and diligent. And still the calmness. Still mind is calming. It's a kind of uh, energizing yourself internally. And that is we call uh, vibration. That we I call diligent and vigilance. And that has been translated as apamada. Sometimes we call apamada is equal to mindfulness. So mindfulness makes you, at a, in a way, agitated. This is a, I call catalyzing. You are being catalytic. But still you are calmed down. So these two, in a, if you put a uh, brain, brain wave starter, you can see theta waves sometimes fully active, very bright. But the person is still calm and quiet. Sometimes they are going to the very calm, but mind is so not sober, Mind is little uh, like a turtle, tucking. So these two, the Wikipedia explain, without meditation, they explain the vibration of the wave. So I asked Venerable Dhammasagara and Mr. Asoka from the, uh, the campus, uh, Moratua campus, and see how the vipassana developed mind and the agitation still calm down, and the samatha calming down and becoming a turtle-like, Still, they are both considered as they are very contented, very spiritual, and two kinds of one thing is very vibrant, very vigilant, very diligent, but very full of composure. That's called contentment. The other people get the same contentment with the samatha. Samatha means calm down and uh, how do you call uh, single mindedness, one pointedness. But the other people's single-minded mindfulness and the mi minded, uh, pointedness is momentary. Brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
It has no Buddhist or non-Buddhist. It has no any kind of a ruler or ruling. And that is Buddha. That's the Buddha mind. So it's a shortcut. In the Vasan moment, whenever you become mindful, but the task is how to maintain that for five minutes, ten minutes. So that is my comment. I have a question. Um, regarding your external affairs, like Satipasala or teaching here, how do you um, arrange those things, think about those things, plan for them, and at the same time keep mindfulness? Because it's important to stay in the present moment, but of course sometimes one has to think for the future or learn from the past. I so will how put do you it in, the, I'll put it in this way. How can I work with the society? How can I work with myself? Wherever it goes, I don't care the society. I don't care what they are telling. Do what I am telling. I am a Hitler. Otherwise, I will kick you out. And then I can maintain my integrity. Sometimes I may be wrong. But later I understand, no, no, that time I was very harsh. And then I go and say, I am sorry, at that time I would have hurt you. But otherwise, I can't, I can't run this sheep. I am the captain. So my, my how to call, autonomous and my monotonous tone that I am the I am the king. So that kind of a that kind of a thing is happening. I heard that kind of a thing is happening for the present Chinese president also. That kind of thing is happening in Putin also. They they become one man army. And they don't care about and I now I I, I read uh, what about the Prabhakaran? You have you heard about the Prabhakaran? He was the terrorist leader. Go on to the eighth grade, Tamil Tamil terrorist leader, and the present uh, uh, the defense secretary. He was the Sri Lankan hero. He wrote about the Prabhakaran character, very adamant, not mindful. Anyone coming rivalry, kill him. Anyone in his society not listening, no mercy. And that that kind of adamant character is there whenever you are running a society. And not only the mindful society, not only the Satipasala. So I find many of the Satipasala members, they don't know much the, what the mindfulness is. They want to have a frame. They want to have a constitution. They want to have ethics. Yes, yes. As far as there is no problem, we have to have ethics and everything. But when you are in action, you have to take a decision and run. Don't listen to so much of masters. So one man army. Usually I am not that. I am very happy to be myself in the my kuti and uh, uh, read and uh, look YouTube or whatever may be. But if I am asked to come to the society, I had a very nice discussion last time with the, uh, the Commissioner General of the uh, Sunday School and the Commissioner General's assistant of the Buddhist affairs and the assistant of the Pradeshiya Sabha, the local government secretary. And Palata, Palada Vardhana, they are creative. And they, I had a two hours discussion. I told you it's a very good time. Tomorrow we are going to meet Satipasala children. And before that, you will have your own agenda. Lucky enough, you accepted mindfulness now for any Dhampasala, Sunday school, and Pirivena. Now we have now more than 70 monks coming from the Pirivena. They wanted to put mindfulness into the into the syllabus. Are we going to introduce mindfulness in learning each and every language or subject? Are we going to teach mindfulness as a subject? You get the point? Whenever I am going to introduce mindfulness as a subject, I have to take a Buddhist stand. Even I can, but in the schools, who are seventy percent non non Buddhist, so then I have to write complete novelty. How to put mindfulness is the simple mindfulness, uh, bear attention. I am not talking about the Nibbana. Eh? I am not talking about the Jhana. Eh? Nothing, just to be mindful. So I have to always be mindful specifically when I am working with so-called mindful society. Because of most of the mindful people in our mindful school, not that I am not asking the children, teachers, they don't know mindfulness. The mindfulness that I understand as mindfulness, I don't, it may be wrong. So there is always a challenge when you are working in a society, when you are in the regimentation. And the mindfulness is dislodging, dislodging all the regimentation. You become like a flying bird. 
no direction, no, uh, no traces. But still they wanted to have a constitution and all the kind. Yes, we can do it. But don't be a slave to your own constitution. Don't be slave to your own officers. And the government officers, I feel so sorry. They are in such a bureaucracy. They, are, they try to understand mindfulness, but their frame never allow them to. Even the parents can't think. Even the teachers can't think. One person told, to give an example, he told Bhante, we have the Dhampasala from 8 to 11 o'clock, for example. This is 11 o'clock, child has to go to another tuition class. Sometimes the tuition class is starting at 8 o'clock. Uh, sorry, 10 o'clock. So they come and say, Bhante, please, I have to go to the tuition class. You see, we teachers, they are not listening, but the tuition master is taking children from the down. Then I told, they are, you are not in, you are inefficient. Tuition master is efficient. To pull the child, make yourself efficient. Don't be envious with the tuition master. Give some mindful games. Give some activities, then children will be here. You are just hating the tuition master. They are taking money, taking the child. You are doing volunteer work. You are not creative. So therefore, I find fault with you. So I told you, you will come into our mindful society and we will make policies. I will teach you how to get the attraction of the children. So likewise, our mind jumping out to the other object, this object, keeping the primary object aside. Understand? So you see, secondary object, they are very efficient for the passion and for the head. And you have to you have keep in the primary object as a pivotal point. This as a benchmark and the datum line. See how monkey mind. So therefore, when you are working in a society, I mean mindful school, they, each one is pulling in their own direction. So I will give. Then I tell this is the final decision. Hurry up, go. No more discussion. So this say I become uh, I become authoritarian. I mean one upmanship or ekadipati. How do you call it? Dictator. Uh, dictator. I feel so sorry because I, my natural nature is to listen to others and uh, send the flow according to the slope. But sometimes I have to declare because I am the, I am the competent authority here in, in Nisarnwani. I just let it run. Whenever something goes wrong, I take the uh, knife, chop. No. Till that, okay. And the Satipasala, now we are in a critical problem in Satipasala. So it, I am not in a problem. I am relaxed. Satipasala is a, it's a side job. It is not my main issue. But I, I can do. But chuck, cut off. With that dictatorship is that the, that's why the Buddha became such a person. There is no two words. Everyone follow, follow him. But due to the attraction, not due to the authority. But mind may is not may know parallel to the Buddha, but kind of a authoritarian. So you are a very young person, you will also will, will, will get cut off, chopped off. Or become a dictator. Huh? Or become a dictator. Oh, you have to be a dictator. Then I will say, yes, sir, thank you, sir. I give and go. Because I have to find you. you can, can you take a decision in such a troubled situation or not to take a decision? It's also a decision. Let the situation run. No, no kind of compromising. Understand? No. A little bit. No, <laughs> you don't understand. Sometimes you don't yeah. understand. You have to. You have to. You have to eat this cake little while. Sometimes there's just oh, so many places that you cover, Bhante, that uh, it's hard for me to put it together. So, but, but anyway, you have enough. But I some points. Enough time because I am so old. So you are not so old. Thank you, Bhante. Ukraine? No comment? Ukraine is very fearful because Russia, <laughs> Russia will take action if you are going to take anything, state anything. Okay, a few minutes are there. Either continuing or going to the next stanza. I was going to add, uh, you should understand that thinking about the future, like planning, is, is a present moment thought about the future. And thinking about the past is a present moment thought about the past. So it, it depends on whether you're aware of, of the nature of what you're thinking of. It's, it's when you get lost into 
we'll say, anxiety that you start to flee into the future and imaginative and fantasizing or if you go into the past and you're having remorse or nostalgia or something like that, reminiscing or a sense of, you know, uh, loss, usually that's, again, a present moment feeling is like I, I'm feeling loss and there and I'm escaping into thoughts about the past and I'm immersed into it. Like it's it's like you go to the cinema and there's a a light on the wall of the screen and you you hear sounds coming out of the speakers, but uh, like if you get up and start to to kiss the actress on the screen, you know the uh, the light, you know that that's where you're immersed into the the film. You you don't see the it, that it's just light and you don't hear that it's just sound. So you, you know um, planning like say I I have to take the bus and I have to take it at five o'clock, and I have to be ready, and I have to prepare. Like, that's just planning. That, that isn't what we talk about uh, being lost in the future or lost in the past. That's present moment thinking about what the, the sequence of events. In fact, that's mindfulness. You're, you're, like, mindfulness has different meanings. One of the m mindfulness is mind the step, mind what you have to do, be careful. There's a, a cautionary side to mindfulness. And, like, as a monk, you have to... Uh, you have to like not walk yourself into uh, mistakes or into issues. Like we we don't have money, so if you go somewhere where you know you have to pay a fee, and you didn't have that all arranged, then it's it's a mess. You know, so this this monk who will say, "I was being mindful." No, you weren't mean. They weren't being mindful at all because they had no plan of action and they were just completely chaotic and a mess. You know, so you have to be very careful when you go out. You have to be mindful when you go out. And, and that may require some, some careful planning and organization. But th that isn't what we're talking about when we say, uh, you know, future-orientated thinking. And, you know, that's where you sit down and you're, you're imagining that you're, you know, a famous monk in the future and you're teaching a big retreat or something. You know, you have some little story going on in your head. That's, that's what we're talking about as being, like, toxic or as a defilement being diligent and cautious and careful and doing a, a plan and executing and following a schedule, that's just being very present moment, actually, you know. So I, I just thought that might help you distinguish what in, in our language what we're talking about. So, so that's how he does a lot of the stuff. He's, he's organized, he's planned, he has a schedule. You see him writing things down, journaling, and, you know, taking notes all the time. And, you know, that's how you, you, you have to do it. You have to be really organized and, and on point all the time. Thank you. So it is time for Bindabhata, very active participation. Thank you very much. This is the end of our English mission, the weekly discussion.